Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be doing a full and complete setup guide for yet another Nintendo Switch emulator, Ryujinx. As usual, everything you will need for this guide can be found in links down in this video's description. On top of this, you'll also find handy and helpful links for the Ryujinx Discord server, as well as a link to my own Discord server if you need any additional help with getting this emulator set up or configured. As long as you follow all of the steps and settings shown in this guide, you should have absolutely no problem playing compatible games like Pokemon Sword and Shield or Animal Crossing New Horizons. Let's jump straight across to my desktop and get this setup guide started. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is actually download the emulator builds we're going to be using. You'll find this ryujinx.org link down in this video's description. Next, we're going to come to this download section, and here you can see the automatically compiled builds for Windows, Linux, and Mac. Be aware that these Mac builds are just not going to work for you, so just use either Linux or Windows depending on which operating system you're using. I myself am using Windows, so I'll select it and I'm going to download it to my desktop. Depending on your browser, you should see it downloading in the bottom left or top right hand corner. Wait for it to fully download and then we can proceed. Okay, so it is downloaded now. I'm just going to bring it to center window, then I'm going to right click on it and using 7-zip, I'm going to extract it to a folder of its own. This can take a few minutes depending on the speed of your CPU, so just be patient again and wait for it to finish extracting. Now that it's extracted, I'm just going to move this out of the way and bring my actual extracted folder to the center of my window. When you open it, you should see this publish folder. Inside, you will find the exe for running Ryujinx emulator. However, before we start running anything, we still need to install one more thing. Again, down in the description, you'll find this link to the OpenAL installer. All you need to do is download and extract it. Then you need to run this exe. This is going to launch this OpenAL installer. All you need to do is click OK and it should say installation complete. While it's not required, I would advise you to restart your system at this point to get the best functionality out of the emulator. Installing OpenAL is absolutely integral, so please remember to do so. Next, we're going to reopen our Ryujinx folder and I'm just going to run the exe which I previously downloaded. Don't worry about any of these pop-ups, I'm going to show you how to install and set up everything for the emulator. OK, the next thing we need to do is come to File, open Ryujinx folder, you can see that our path for all of this data is AppData Roaming Ryujinx. We are looking for this system folder. Into this system area, you need to drag and drop or place your prod.keys and title.keys. These files are required for the decryption of game updates, DLCs and firmware installations on the emulator. Please make sure that these keys are updated to the latest version 9.2.0 at the time of making this video. Once you have them added, you can close this window. Next, we're going to be actually installing our firmware. To do this, you come to Tools, Install Firmware, and you can see from here you can install a firmware from XCI or ZIP or from a directory itself. The easiest way I found is by just using an XCI or ZIP. To do this, I'm going to open the browser, select the drive on which all of my Switch backups are stored, and first of all, I'm going to show you how to install your firmware from an XCI, which is, as many of you know, a game cart dump. This is my Tokyo Amaraz Sessions dump. All I need to do is select it like so and click open. In the event that you get this parsing firmware failed error, don't worry, it's really, really easy to fix this issue. All you need to do is close the emulator, then reopen it. Then we're just going to come back to tools, install firmware, install a firmware from XCI or zip. Then we're going to come back to the exact same folder, select the exact same file again, click open, and there you go. It's going to install firmware 8.0.1, which is the firmware that comes packaged with the Tokyo Mirage Sessions XCI. Installing from XCI is probably the easiest way to install a firmware, since it's going to make sure that for the games you have, you're going to be able to use them absolutely no problem. And to be honest, Ryujinx doesn't even require you to have a firmware of this high in number installed. It's just best practice to install the latest that you have available to you. Since my Switch is updated to firmware 9.2.0, and I have indeed dumped my NAND and all the files required, I'm just going to quickly install 9.2.0 from a zip. As before, all I do is select yes to install firmware 9.2.0 and there you go. It's showing 9.2.0 installed in both this prompt and in the bottom right hand corner of the window. Our next step is to change some of our settings and also add games to our games list so that we can load and play them on the emulator. To do this, come to options, settings, 
Here you can see in this general section we have access to system language and system region. I'd just leave both of these at the default. I'd also recommend disabling a Discord rich presence since it's just something I don't like to have enabled on my emulators. For game directories, again, all you have to do is click the browse button, then navigate to wherever on your system you have your Switch games stored. Mine are right here in this Switch games folder, all I need to do is highlight it like so, click add and there you go, you can see my game directory path has been added to my game directory list. When I click save, all my games are now fully showing up and detecting since I have one got my decryption keys installed in my system folder and two got my firmware installed from my XCI and also from my zip. As I said before, you don't need to install from both the zip and the XCI, just installing from one of your XCIs is going to be enough. Our next step for this emulator's setup is to actually look over the general settings and input settings in order to get your controllers fully worked and set up. So come back to options, settings, and in this area we've already touched pretty much on this general section. Coming across to input, I'm just going to recommend that you leave it as it is, leaving it at handheld. I would also recommend not enabling a docked, while you can enable it and it does work, usually you get lower performance when you're in docked mode since it uses a higher resolution, so I'm just going to recommend that you leave enable docked mode disabled. Another thing that I want to note is that at the present moment at least Ryujinx does not have a GUI controller mapping, however most controllers will just automatically work with the emulator. All that you need to do is make sure that your controller is connected to your PC before you launch the emulator that will make sure that your controller will just automatically work with any of the games you're playing. Paired with this handheld mode in undocked, you should have absolutely no problems with input. Next, moving across to this system section, there are another few settings you can change. You can enable or disable a VSync from right here, I would recommend leaving it enabled. And also, in this logging section, I would highly recommend for the best performance that you disable all of these logging settings. Now, in the event that you're looking for support over on the Ryujinx Discord server, please re-enable all of these different logging settings since you're not going to print any information to your actual log if you have them disabled, but for the best performance, I would absolutely recommend to turn these off. The final thing that you may or may not want to enable on the emulator is this ignore missing services hack. For the most part, you don't need to enable this, but for certain games like I've found Pokemon Sword and also Animal Crossing New Horizons, you absolutely, at least right now, need to have this ignore missing services option enabled, or the game will just crash constantly or not even load at all. Once you have all of these settings as shown, make sure to hit the save button and we're now basically done with configuring the emulator. Since at least right now Ryujinx does not have any form of auto updater for it, the best way to update to a new version is simply come back to their website and download the latest build. All of the settings that you have just applied for the best compatibility will work with any future versions of this emulator. I'm now going to show you how you can play Animal Crossing New Horizon using the custom build which was just released on the Ryujinx Patreon. Please be aware that while yes you do need this custom build to play this game right now, it is likely going to be compatible in their master version in the next few days and weeks. Once it is, I'll make sure to update update the pinned comment down below this video to let you guys all know when it's playable in the latest master version which you'll get from their website. Right here you can see a Windows build, a Linux build and a game save. I'm going to download the Windows build since I'm on Windows and I'm also going to download the save. Both of these are going to be saved again to my desktop. Okay, so now that I have them downloaded, I'm going to close my browser and I'm also going to close this folder since it's not this master version we're going to be using for Animal Crossing. Again, as I did before, I'm going to drag this to the center of my window. Let's also bring my save over and then I'm going to right click this custom build. Using a 7-zip again, I'm going to extract it to a folder of its own. Again, just wait for this to extract and then we can proceed. Now, in order to have the least amount of confusion possible, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to right click this new custom build, then I'm going to rename it to Ryu Animal Crossing Patreon Preview. I'm doing this because the naming structure of Ryujinx's folders is a little bit confusing. Doing this will just help you keep track of exactly which build you are using. Using this version of the emulator is exactly the same as the previous one we have just set up. All you need to do is run the ryujinx.exe and exactly the same as before, you're going to have all of the same settings. However, for Animal Crossing New Horizon, in this custom build they have added a new way to add saves. You can see this version has this open device save directory. It is into this directory that we need to add the save we previously downloaded. 
To actually get this save, we need to extract it. So as before, I'm gonna right click, and again, using a 7-zip, I'm gonna extract this to a folder of its own. I'm just gonna open this folder, and these are the three files that you require to get game saves working, or have a loadable save in the emulator. Next, we wanna come back to our custom build, right click and select open device save directory. This is going to give you this prompt, simply select yes, and it is going to make this directory for you. Once it opens, let's drag it over here and it is into this path and area right here that you want to drag and drop these three save files. This is literally all you need to do. This is exactly how you add save files to pretty much any game on the emulator. Please be aware though that this add device save directory option is only currently available in this custom build, so you're not going to be able to properly add a save for Animal Crossing on any other build right now. If you follow all the steps I've shown thus far, you now have all of the best settings for running practically every game on this emulator. Please, as I said before, also make sure that you connect your controller to your computer and make sure it's turned on before you actually run or launch this emulator or any of its games, otherwise you're not going to get any input whatsoever. Please also be aware that this emulator can take quite a long time to load your games after you've booted them, so please just have a bit of patience and your game should eventually load. Obviously, game compatibility isn't perfect on this or any emulator out there, but if you want to check out what games do work well, I'll leave a link to this emulator's Discord down in this video's description. That's gonna be it for this video. Once again, guys, thank you all very much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Remember to like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.